Hi there. Um, <laughs> still at home, technically, but I'm in the garden this time, um, not the shed. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you today about this stuff, all of this stuff here. It's uh, one of my favourite plants and um, this video is basically to tell you why I rate it so highly. This thing's called Taunton Dean Perennial Kale, uh, sometimes known as a type of tree kale. Um, these plants grow into massive bushes. Have you ever seen sea kale out um, by the seaside? If you let one of these grow naturally, it'll do exactly that. It'll turn it into a kind of huge sprawling bush. And uh, as you can see, this one has sprawled everywhere and it's actually coming to the end of its useful life, this patch, but there's still good pickings for this year to be had. Um, and I'll show you later on how to take cuttings, which is the way to propagate Taunton Dean. Um, this doesn't make flowers. So in the normal scheme of things, uh, anything in the cabbage plant family will create a flower that will create seed pods and you can then plant those seeds and you'll get um, a cabbage the next year. But with this stuff, it, I've only ever seen it flower once and then it didn't set seeds, but it pretty much just grows leaves um, and branches out all over the place. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. Um, how to grow it, how to cook it, how to harvest it, and uh, hopefully you'll want to grow it too. So this is how you propagate a Taunton Dean plant. Um, the way you do it is you take a piece off the original plant, and this is just a side branching uh, bit of kind of, you can do it at different sizes. This is quite a good size to do if you want the plant to romp away, it'll root at most sizes as, as long as the stem here isn't too woody, it's still got some green or purple colour on it. And uh, to, to make the cutting you simply do the following, you take off all of these smaller leaves, which that's a dodgy one, but um, these are all perfectly edible, you can add that to your harvest as well, and leave just the top few leaves on and then we don't even need, I mean, I've never used rooting compound on this bottom, but you just stick that in the ground or you put it in a plant pot full of compost or soil and uh, keep it moist um, and it'll start to grow. The reason I've taken all these leaves off is because that's still alive, that's still a plant. Um, and without any roots in place, it will still lose moisture through its leaves. So you only need to leave the growing tip. I could even probably take this one off, this large one here, but I'm gonna leave that on. And you, uh, yeah, so you stick that in the ground and uh, the bit un that's underground will very quickly, especially this time in the spring, start to um, romp away with some uh, roots. And uh, you can see as soon as it's got some roots, this tip will start to grow and away you go, you've got a new plant. So now I've got my cutting, I'm gonna try this one in the outdoor planting method. Um, the bit that's going to go underground, you can give it a bit of a helping hand by damaging the stalk like so with your fingernail before you stick it in. But the main thing you have to do is just poke it as far into the ground as you can to ensure good contact. And that plant's ready to go. It will root. So we're going to go into the greenhouse now and uh, see some cuttings I've prepared earlier. So these are, were taken not long ago and they should be in the process of rooting now. So can you see there? Taunton Dean and I've got um, 48 I think in those modules waiting to go, hoping to root. All my other stuff is also here. See there, seedlings of all types, um, and so yeah, that's an alternative way you can do it in modules with uh, smaller cuttings, um, and a majority of those I imagine will take. Um, come out. I'll show you these ones outside, which are established cuttings now. Here we go. You see those there? Those are both Taunton Dean. You see they've got more of the purple colour on them than the green. Um, the plant does do this probably because of a bit of. Uh, 
water or nutrient stress but once those get planted out it'll start to come green again um, doesn't affect the quality of the leaves much I have to say for eating purposes so this is how you harvest um, leaves as long as they're not too big this leaf here I would leave on the plant just to feed the plant what you want to take off is um, sort of medium sized leaves like that this one um, so and you literally go all the way around the plant and you harvest some for your dinner um, make sure not to strip one bit of the plant completely it needs some leaves in order to photosynthesize and carry on growing and these leaves at this time of year are incredibly sweet and they're, they're also sweeter the older the plant is because the roots go further and get better nutrients I think I don't know why the reason is maybe it's because they've had a frost um, but in the summer they can become quite peppery which is nice as a little bit in a salad but they can taste a bit bitter when boiled in the middle of summer but you know the whole point of this plant is that it's being harvested now at the end of March when there's precious little else available it's proper hungry gap stuff and uh, yeah and don't make don't forget every every cutting you make uh, keep some keep all the leaves you strip off to eat as well because it's a waste otherwise um, and there you go you need to pick quite a lot because it wilts down when you cook it but it's definitely it worth it and if you have a decent sized patch given over to this you're not ever going to run out it's about to really start ramping away with the spring as the daylight gets longer mm, kale for dinner as you can see here we've made a rudimentary attempt at uh, protecting this um, Taunton Dean is a member of the Brassica family and that's such it uh, suffers from all the pests you can imagine it normally outfoxes something like rabbits they, they, they once it's got big they, they can't even get around but um, some form of netting to keep the majority of pigeons off is a good idea because when this stuff gets big it's actually strong enough for them to land on um, and then they'll eat away at the growing tips which doesn't do it much good but if it does get damaged it will tend to uh, grow back from uh, from from wherever it's got to so it makes side branches and those side branches will provide you with leaves and it will get strong again um, the other thing to watch out for is of course if you've got a patch this size it is an absolute dream to the cabbage white butterfly caterpillars uh, luckily it doesn't seem to make a dent so we just we just let them do it really occasionally if there's a bad infestation we'll uh, come and pick them off the leaves once upon a time everybody um, would have had a plant like Taunton Dean the name Taunton Dean comes from the place where it was discovered uh, in a kitchen garden and there are other surviving varieties of tree kale perennial kale that have survived in different places. Um, there's a, one called Ewiger Kohl in Germany, um, which is a more robust tasting one. I think Taunton Dean's got to be one of the finest flavours. That You just take cuttings of that as well, uh, and it rarely goes to seed. There's one called Dorbenton's Kale, which um, is a, a French variety. Um, they don't get as big. These Taunton Dean ones, you've seen the, the pictures of this sort of scrubby, left-to-go, wild, patch but um, on the allotment I've, ha I've had one grow to eight foot with a bit of support and pruning um, which had to live in its own giant cage <laughs> and it's uh, it's an amazing thing to see anything in the cabbage family just that big um, it lasted about seven years and it's kind of on its last legs now its support blew down in the winds uh, just earlier in the year so um, before people started trying to sell you varieties every year the seed companies you know in the there was a boom for the seed companies in the sort of late victorian period um they were coming up with new varieties every year and and selling their new varieties and uh, it was a big business um 
and these old varieties got forgotten. But the thing is, once you've got one of these established in your garden, you have plants forever and and they last longer. So they, once it's got through its first year, you don't really have to water it because the roots of the perennial root system are so deep. It just goes down and finds it. Even in some of the driest summers, they survive without any watering. Um, all I would say is that if you're going to try and keep one of these going for years, you just need to mulch the the surface where you think the roots are, just around the stalk, um, with something nutritious like a rotting manure or uh, homemade uh, compost from uh, kitchen waste and things like that. Uh, any kind of fertiliser will do, and they'll they'll love it. Um, they're very low maintenance plants. Mm, kale for dinner. 